Hi, it's Kurt here at City Campus, and uh, we are continuing our series this week on plans of salvation and how to uh, tell people about Jesus. Now, yesterday I kind of gave you my usual marking, Bible marking thing. It's pretty short and pretty sweet. Um, I want to show you today the most famous one. It's called the Roman Road. Uh, I don't use it uh, primarily because it focuses on the book of Romans, a book written to Christians. Um, so I tend to I tend to normally focus most of my energy on stuff that's written to people or, or about people becoming Christians, which is why I spend a lot of time in the book of Acts. I, I hope that kind of makes sense. Romans is all written to Christians who are in Rome. Um, it does talk a tremendous amount about the theology of Jesus and the theology of becoming a Christian. However, I think that a lot of things are, for lack of a better term, understood. And therefore, Romans doesn't cover those things. For example, in chapter six of Romans, if you look at the first few chapter, or few verses of chapter six, there's a tremendous section on baptism, and it covers what I would consider one of the better coverages of baptism in the Bible. So read that. But then in the plans of salvation that are given in other places, or at least what people purport to be them, um, it's not mentioned. And it's because I think everybody understands that, and we're just pulling a verse or two out there. So I'm going to show you the Roman road, uh, what several people's plans are. Or what, what I've seen is, I, I, found a, I found my favorite representation of it. And then we can uh, discuss a little bit, and you can decide if that's what makes sense for you to use. So let's go ahead and take a look what I found. So this got questions, uh, dot org, I think, is a pretty good little, pretty good little place, right? So here's this Roman road. Of course, they got a cool little Roman road thing. And if you want, you can just watch the video. which I assume would play if I was... What is the Romans Road to Salvation? The Romans Road to Salvation is a way of explaining the good news of salvation using verses from the book of Romans. Yep. It is a simple yet powerful method. So you can look that, you can look that uh, little video up if you want to, and you'll be able to see that. But really, it's pretty simple. And some of the stuff that was in yesterday's is in this one as well, which is Romans 3.23, for all of sin and come short of the glory of God. We're all sinners and everything like that. Um, there's a whole piece about sin. There's a whole piece about the, uh, the wages of sin in, uh, you know, in Romans, uh, in Romans uh, 3, 10 through 18. Romans 6, 23, probably the most important thing. It says um, the wages of sin is death, right? Wages of sin is death, but it goes on to say that the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus our Lord. And Romans 5 8, of course, again, you'll notice all these are separate little verses that they're pulling out, says God demonstrates his own love towards us while we were sinners, Christ died for us. All true. And, and I mean, all of this stuff is totally true, okay? So again, as you're trying to explain to people what Jesus' relationship to this, we're sinners. You know, we all sin, but God, um, you know, God gives us a way out, and that way out is the gift of God through Jesus Christ. And Jesus demonstrated his love because he gave us that chance while we were still sinners. He died for us while we were still sinners. And now here's, here's where it gets a little bit dicey for me. In Romans 10, 9, this is one of the stops on the Roman road, is if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. Now, see, that's at odds with everything we see in the book of Acts. Acts says you should repent. You should believe. That's first. You should repent of your sins. And then you should be baptized. And that's what it says over and over again in the book of Acts. We, we saw that last week, and I think we saw it even a little bit more this week. Um, confession is good. And I mean, it's part of it as well, right? But, but it, 
that's that's this part of being fully, you know, fully believing in Jesus and fully uh, uh, committing to Him. You know, is this part that that I would put right here? So I, this is a little bit of a problem, but I think I understand it in that it was written to Christians. You know, Romans 10, 13, a little bit further on, it's again, looking at that context, but everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Yeah, Jesus died to pay our penalty, but what does calls on mean? And I think the book of Acts says certainly that belief repentance, baptism, those are the major components. Confession, I think, is, is in Acts as well, but, uh, but not as uh, focused as those three, belief, repentance, baptism. Uh, what is the results of salvation? Well, again, uh, as I would say, I normally use Acts 2.38 through 42 or thereabouts, but as you know, Acts 2.38, we talked about yesterday and other days, it says, uh, and you'll receive, and you're for, for the forgiveness of your sins. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. So there you go. Do that. You get the forgiveness of your sins, and you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Romans 5 1 says, Therefore, since we've been justified through faith, we have peace with God through Jesus. And that's true. We do have peace, and that's part of that's our peace with God. We receive the forgiveness of sins. Um, and there's no, Romans 8, 1 says, there's no condemnation for those who are in Jesus Christ. That's also true, right? So, and then you can not, you won't be separated from God. You, as long as you believe in him, as long as you are remain in his faith, you cannot be separated. Nobody else outside you can separate it. And that's what Romans 8, 38 and 39 says. Now, um, and then they go into a prayer thing. And again, I don't believe that's what the Bible says. Anything about this prayer to God thing and, and send a letter to somebody. You're supposed to publicly confess your faith and the way you publicly confess your faith is through baptism. So that's where my problem with the Roman road is. So I would recommend you use the one from yesterday. But I do want you to know that, that Roman Road thing is out there. It's probably one of the bigger ones, and different groups use it. I just find it a little bit problematic. So today's devotion is make sure you understand what you're telling people, and don't just read them a bunch of verses. Get that context. Get that understanding. Uh, and, and, and if you don't feel like studying the Bible and getting really into it, I get that. 100% get that. Tell your story or tell a story. We showed you how to do that on Monday and Tuesday. Your story is just as valid. How did you get to know Jesus and tell that story? It's a valid thing. But if you're going to explain the Bible, even if you're going to do it with a Mark Bible verse, make sure you understand what you're talking about and not just reading a bunch of verses. Um, it's up to you how you want to do it. But, uh, and I think, I still think the most effective way, the way I've used more than any other, is to tell my story. And uh, maybe later we jump in and get all theological. But uh, hope you have a great one. Let's pray and that will get you on to your day. Father, we love you and thank you for the Roman road. Um, even though there may be some uh, potholes that we have to kind of watch out for on the Roman road a little bit. Uh, just to make sure that we're really following your plan, uh, because it was written to people who were already Christians. And uh, Father, uh, help us to understand things and tell the story that leads people to Jesus. It's in his name we pray. Amen. You guys have an amazing day, and uh, we'll talk to you tomorrow.